As our guest speaker, Kate Wallace Rogers, mentioned last week, February is the month that honors black history and also celebrates Valentine's Day. So this whole month is an exploration of love and how it may call us to be of greater service to the world. Today's service is called About Love. Maybe you recognize that as the title of Bell Hooks' book on the subject. That was an influential book for me. Today we are talking not just about the Hallmark greeting card or Lifetime movie versions of love, but love at the very center of our faith and what that means to us and how that challenges us. But before we begin today's service, I have just a few announcements to share. Soon we will be sending out via email a new members directory. We've taken that down off of our website. And this PDF that we send you will be password protected. So please ask our office administrator, Kenneth, either in person or by phone for the new password. You can see we're trying to avoid these terrible phishing scams that just keep going around. We want to protect all of your data. So that's what we've come up with. Look for that in your email boxes. Our winter spirituality series starts next week. So please let us know if you'd like to join us after the service next Sunday for a labyrinth walk in the woods of Truro. And we're also excited for the Interfaith Singspiration event the following Sunday, February 25th. We'll be joining up with other congregations in town to share our favorite hymns and songs with each other. That should be a lot of fun. There are several other great events too, including one on Zoom about creating a legacy from everyday life. So not writing a will about distributing your possessions, but writing a will about what you want to pass on, what do you want your legacy to be. We're also having a death cafe where we'll get together, eat cake, and talk about a topic that we don't often get to talk about with others, death. There are flyers for these events on the welcome table and also on our website, uumh.org, under the tab called News. Our Circle Supper potlucks are happening Saturday night, February 24th. You can still sign up to attend one of these. We are actually looking for one or two more host locations as well. So if you could fit four to six people around your table for a potluck dinner, please let us know. You can sign up to either attend or host with Lisa Bergeron. Give a wave, Lisa. She's got the sign-up sheet ready for you. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the World Day of Prayer. This is a global ecumenical movement led by Christian women all over the world who join together in prayer and action for peace and justice. This year, the prayer program has been written by a group of Palestinian Christian women, and their theme is, I beg you, bear with one another in love. Their service shares the stories of three Palestinian women from three different generations, and the symbol of the olive tree is going to be used throughout the service. If you'd like to participate in this service locally on Friday, March 1st at the Wellfleet Congregational Church, please let me know. They are looking for readers. And all of you are invited to attend that World Day of Prayer service at 1 o'clock on March 1st. And finally, if you are attending in person this morning, we invite you to our coffee hour downstairs in Acker Bosworth Hall. You don't have to talk about death. You can talk about other things. But because Mardi Gras is coming up this week, Chef Dan has made us a king cake. So there will be cake. Yes. Thank you, Dan. And today there is also a table set up down there to make valentines. So stop by that table if you are feeling creative 
or if you forgot to get your sweetheart a card for Wednesday. And a little later in the service, I'll tell you who else you might want to craft a valentine for. And now, let's take a moment to affirm our community's covenant. You can find this on the little purple laminated cards in your pews, or you can just listen line by line as I say it. I invite you to repeat each line after me. Love is the spirit of this meeting house. This is our great covenant. This is our great covenant. To dwell together in peace. To, dwell together in peace. to, seek, the to seek the truth in love. And to help one another. And now as we light our chalice here in the sanctuary, I invite those of you watching from home to light a candle wherever you are. In this way, we can feel connected even while we are apart. And this morning, I invite Shar and Stuart to light our chalice for us. Reverend Tom Goldsmith who served as the first Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City uh, preacher for 34 years before retiring, used this chalice lighting to begin worship every Sunday. Symbol of light and knowledge, symbol of warmth and freedom, we light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here, we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. Please join us now in singing our opening hymn number 95, There Is More Love Somewhere. That's number 95 in our gray hymnals. There is more love somewhere. Please rise as you are able. One more time. I invite you now into a time of meditation and prayer. 
During this time or any time during the service, you are welcome to light a silent candle at the table to the right of the pulpit, where there is a journal to record your thoughts and prayers. After the prayer, we will sing together Spirit of Life, hymn number 123, which you can also find printed on the purple laminated cards in your pews. We'll sing it first in English and then in Spanish. Our prayer this morning comes from the Ojibwe writer Richard Wagamese. I am not created or recreated by the noise and clatter of my life, by the rush and scurry, the relentless chase or the presumption that more gets more. No. I am created and recreated by moments of stillness and quiet. I am struck richer by a pure solitude that allows me to feel the world around me and lean into my place in it. I am not the rush of words in my life's narrative. I am its punctuation, its pauses and stops. I am my ongoing recharge. And in this silence, I am reborn. Amen.
Today's reading is by Reverend Fred Small, a sermon reader, writer, and a songwriter. It's called Siding with Love. Where is our holy church? We're on the side of love. Many Unitarian Universalists suffer from a chronic identity crisis. People ask us, what do Unitarian Universalists believe? And we freeze. We don't know what to say because Unitarian Universalists believe in so many things, so many different things. We are priests of paradox, apostles of ambiguity, nattering nabobs of nuance. I had to look that one up. <laughs> I came best with uh, casual collectors of nuance. And so, the Unitarian Universalist Association produces seven, now eight, principles and six sources and countless pamphlets and little wallet cards to remind us what we kinda sorta believe. We are exhorted to compose elevator speeches, summations of Unitarian Universalism, so pithy they might be recited on an elevator in its fleeting passage between floors. Do we believe in God? Question, simple. Answer, impossible. The important question is not what we believe, but where we stand. Define God. Define believe, define we, define in. <laughs> I want to side with love. Of course, when I say standing, Fred says, I'm not talking about a physical posture. Rosa Parks stood on the side of love by remaining seated. Of course, I'm talking about a moral stance, not just assumed privately in our hearts, but wit witnessed boldly in our families and schools and workplaces and communities, at the State House, in the halls of Congress. I'm talking about faith in action. I'm not talking about sanctimony. I'm talking about intentionality understanding that our practice will be imperfect, as each of us is imperfect. What is our purpose? What is our aspiration? What is our commitment? To side with love. When Unitarian Lydia Maria Child defied the prohibition of her time against women speaking in public and demanded freedom for enslaved African Americans and the vote for women, when she protested the Trail of Tears, the brutal removal of the Cherokee, she was standing, siding with love. When Unitarian Universalist minister Jim Reeb he did the call of Martin Luther King Jr. to Selma, Alabama, and was bludgeoned to death by racists. He was siding with love. Siding with love doesn't require power. It requires courage, because courage is power. When a child on a playground sticks up for another who is being teased or bullied or left out because they're different, that child is siding with love. Siding with love affirms the full humanity of all people. It honors the inherent worth and dignity, the spark of the divine in each and every person. Siding with love means treating each other well, and whether ally or adversary, 
adversary. Love is patient, wrote the Apostle Paul. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Siding with love means being more committed to being reconciled, compatible, than to being right. Love does not insist on its own way. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. A religious person, Rabbi Abraham Heschel taught us, is one whose greatest passion is compassion, whose greatest strength is love and defiance of despair. His friend, Martin Luther King Jr. added, I've decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. So when someone asks us what Unitarian Universalists believe or why we're speaking out on gay rights or immigrant rights or disability rights or human rights or why we bother to go to church on Sunday morning, let's tell them we are siding with love. Here ends the reading by Reverend Fred Small. Thank you. Please join us now in singing our next hymn. You'll notice a theme this morning. Love Will Guide Us. It's number 131 in that same gray hymnal. Number 131, Love Will Guide Us. Please rise as you are able. is the time in our service where we take a collection for the ongoing support of this meeting house and our shared ministry. As we enjoy a musical reflection by our choir, we welcome your donations here in the sanctuary or online through PayPal or Venmo. You can find that information on our website, uumh.org, and there are QR codes in the pews as well. At this point, I invite Augie and two other volunteer ushers to come forward for the collection. On and off site, your offerings will now be gratefully received.
This morning I bring greetings from Provincetown South. Last weekend I was down in the Gulfport, St. Petersburg area of Florida, where there are many familiar faces. <laughs> I was there to attend an incredible racial justice fundraiser, raising funds for black scholars as part of the Woodson Warriors program that our members, Jane Bunker and Mason Morfitt, founded a few years ago. I was also able to attend church at the U Congregation of St. Petersburg with John Arterton and James Mack. John, who used to be the music director here, is the music director there now. And James is on the tech team. They all report that they hate living in Florida. <laughs> and that no one else should join them down there. <laughs> in fact, the state is full, and they are no longer accepting new people in Florida. So you should probably stay put here on Cape Cod. <laughs> I am just kidding, of course. That's me. I want you to stay here. In reality, our folks who have moved down there have created a quite lovely community of connection and service and sunshine, although it did rain the entire time that I was there. <laughs> but it is different down in Florida. I realized this when we got to the church Sunday morning and there were protesters outside the front doors. They were holding signs and shouting that we were all going to hell. This is mostly because the UU Church in St. Petersburg has an active bodily autonomy and reproductive justice team. One of the things that they do is escort people seeking abortions into Planned Parenthood, where these protesters also congregate. <laughs> they are also, like us, welcoming to the LGBTQ community and are actively working to protect and celebrate transgender people. They say gay there. <laughs> so those are fighting words down in Florida. And on Sunday, those beliefs attracted the negative attention of conservative Christian haters. And I say haters because they weren't just holding signs that say protect life. They were actively shouting messages of hate. And it was really upsetting, both to the congregation and to the staff who had to figure out how to handle it. But their sexton, I love this, went out into the fray and planted a large rainbow flag by the front door. And Reverend Ben, who was preaching, did a great job incorporating what had just happened into his service which was in part about the history of Unitarian Universalism. He explained that the history of Unitarian Universalism, but Universalism in particular, was centered on the idea that God is actually a loving God and that God would never damn people to hell, which is the exact opposite 
of what these protesters believe. Now that was a powerful message back in the 1800s. I mean, obviously, it is still a powerful message now, but particularly back then when universalist circuit riders were making their way on horses, making their way west through farming towns and rural communities, where all of the other churches were preaching hellfire and damnation, and when religious participation was in large part motivated by fear, these circuit riders were preaching about love, about God's love and our love for each other, and that love and not fear of damnation or the calling out of our sins should be the center of our faith. And we are still preaching that, although in slightly different terms. And in some parts of our country, those are still controversial teachings. Now, my favorite moment of the service was actually when the worship host welcomed the new people in the congregation and asked them to introduce themselves. And a woman in the back stood up and said, I'm just here because I was driving by, and I saw the protesters outside, and I thought if that's what they're facing outside, then I want to be what's part of what's happening inside. <laughs> that got big applause down there as well. And then Reverend Ben said, well, I don't know who's going to break it to them that they're actually recruiting for us. <laughs> These days, you don't have to believe in God to be a Unitarian Universalist. But you do have to believe in love. And that's not always an easy thing to do. Faced with these angry protesters, for instance, it was hard to say we should love them. It was hard even to say that we should ignore them, which is what the police advised the congregation to do, and which eventually made them bored enough to leave of their own accord, because they weren't getting the rise out of people that they were seeking. And also, did I mention, it was raining. <laughs> But believing in love, siding with love, requires courage. We heard that message from Reverend Fred Small in our opening reading that Shar shared with us. Siding with love affirms the full humanity of all people, he said. It honors the inherent worth and dignity, the spark of the divine in each and every person. Siding with love, he said, means treating each other well whether ally or adversary. Love is patient, wrote the Apostle Paul. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Recently, my colleague Tess Bomberger played around with these words by Paul. She wrote a piece called, If Bell Hooks Wrote, 1st Corinthians. If bell hooks wrote 1st Corinthians, love is caring, affectionate, and loyal. It recognizes, knows, and respects the other. Love is committed and trusting. Love takes the risk of loving. Love is never hurtful, abusive, or neglectful. It does not coerce or dominate. Neither does it spoil or overindulge. Love is ethical, accountable, and responsible. Love does not lie to avoid conflict or to manipulate. Love does not lie to trick or deceive. Love is on, open and honest, but with a positive slant. Love lives with integrity that wills cooperation. Though it is satisfying to love, love is not about getting one's needs met, nor solely about meeting others' needs. True love is made of mutuality. Love is a generous giver, and in giving it learns to receive. Love places another's interest on the same footing as our own. 
Love is not so much a feeling as an action and continuing active choice to nurture another's well-being. There can be no love without justice and equality. Therefore, love requires that we subvert patriarchy, white supremacy, consumerism, ableism, anti-queerness, and other forms of oppression. Can you imagine that version being read at weddings? <laughs> I love it, I'm up for it. In 2004, the UU musician Jason Shelton was meeting with then UUA President Bill Sinkford when word came that President George W. Bush had called for a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. Reverend Sinkford paused from their conversation to take a call from a reporter. They wanted to know what Unitarian Universalists thought of this news. Jason listened to President Sinkford's responses to the reporter, and he heard him say, we are standing on the side of love. Immediately, Jason started scribbling notes and lyrics. It was one of the most powerful, sacred, creative moments I've ever experienced, he says. And that song, Standing on the Side of Love, number 1014 in our Teal Hymnals, which the choir just sang, flowed through him. The song quickly became an anthem sung at state capitals across the country in the fight for marriage equality. It became a rallying cry when Unitarian Universalists were thrown in jails in 2010 in Phoenix, Arizona, alongside immigrants demonstrating for their rights, and during the Justice GA there in 2012. The UUA even took the name for its public advocacy campaign, making Standing on the Side of Love the slogan our faith was known for in the mid-2000s, emblazoned on can't-be-missed yellow t-shirts that popped out of the crowd at all kinds of demonstrations. At one rally, a reporter was heard saying, I want to speak to the leader of the yellow shirts. This campaign has changed its language in recent years to remove the ableism of the word standing and is now called the Side with Love campaign. After getting feedback about it, Jason Shelton also changed the lyrics to his song, which is now titled Answering the Call to Love. Emboldened by faith, we dare to proclaim we are answering the call to love. While I was down in Florida, John reminded me about a blog that one of my colleagues, Kimberly Debu, writes called Notes from the Far Fringe, which goes through our hymnals song by song, offering commentary. It's educational, but also entertaining, because she definitely does not love all the hymns in our hymnals, and she is not shy about saying why. But she also offers context and insight into many of them as well. Of the new words to this song, Kimberly says, it is evidence of a living tradition that is forever responding to new ways to draw the circle of love even wider. Now I'll admit, at first I didn't like the idea of changing the words to this catchy and meaningful to me hymn. But I figured, if the composer himself was willing to change, why shouldn't I be? And really, why exclude people when we are being given the tools to so easily include them in a song that is about loving people who are so often not included? You know, even though love has been at the center of our faith for a long time, and it is the very first word in our covenant here at the Meeting House, the word love doesn't appear anywhere in our seven UU principles. Did you realize that? For those of you who are new, although we do not have a statement of belief or a creed, 
we do have these common values that we affirm, and they are articulated in the seven principles. And that newly added eighth principle does include the term beloved community, which is getting closer. But in general, love doesn't appear there. Now, I've mentioned to you, if you've been hanging around here for a while, that Unitarian Universalists are actively trying to come up with new ways to describe Unitarian Universalism. Our principles, as we know them now, were written in 1985, and our faith has evolved quite a bit since then. Even though it's a little odd, the place where the principles live within the institution of Unitarian Universalism is actually in our UUA bylaws. And just like here at the Meeting House, every few years, those bylaws need to be reviewed and updated. And recently, the bylaws review team have taken on an enormous project looking at the principles and sources. And they, of course, created a committee about it. I mean, how else does anything get done at a church? So the Article 2 Study Commission, now Article 2 is the exact place in the bylaws where our principles appear, has been meeting and studying and interviewing UUs for several years. And at the last UUA General Assembly in June, they presented a revised Article 2 to the gathering. And it was voted on, and it will also need to be voted on again at this year's General Assembly, which is actually happening online. Now, just like the old principles, the new Article 2 is just a little bit too wordy to roll off the tongue very easily, especially for those of us who are bad at memorizing. But someone creative came up with a graphic to represent this new description of the shared common values of Unitarian Universalism. And guess what is at the center of it? Love, that's right. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Yeah. Vanna? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, even if this graphic is new to you, you'll notice that these words probably aren't. That's because these are the words that we talk about all the time in worship and in our faith work together. And unbeknownst to you, we have been making our way around this pinwheel with worship topics the last few weeks, always referring back to the center word, love. Remember our service on generosity? We talked about how it's not just about how much we give, but what is the spirit of our giving? Are we being generous from a place of obligation, resentment, or guilt? Or are we being generous from a place of love? Are we dealing out veg all or mandarin oranges? <laughs> Refer back to previous sermon to get that joke. We did a reverse offering at the end of that service where we gave out envelopes of cash and asked you to love the world with it. Last week, Kate Wallace Rogers spoke about justice. She talked about the Jamaican community on the Outer Cape and told the story of Pastor David Brown. She asked us to look at that line of our UU Meeting House covenant, love is the spirit of this meeting house, and invited us to look deeply at how we are enacting that in the world through relationship and through how we see and interact with the least advantaged people in our communities. Now we're gonna skip around a bit, but next week we're focusing on transformation as we talk about our spiritual paths. 
And then we're going to talk about pluralism as we get ready for our interfaith singspiration. So I'm excited to continue delving into these themes together and to try on if this little pinwheel design might help us to more actively live out our faith in the world with its constant reminder that love is at the center. Or maybe it's more of a question. Is love at the center? Now, I know we have to get over a lot of things in order to embrace that idea. We have to get over the concern that love is somehow a weak word, that it's not fierce enough for our justice work or strong enough for our doubts. We might worry that it's too saccharine, too sugary and sentimental. We have to get over our concern that love might be a disingenuous word, that it's lacking in sincerity. Maybe we fear that we are lacking in sincerity if we say that our faith is based on love, because we see it as something we are promising rather than something we are striving for. And can we really promise that? Can we promise to love? Maybe we've had to set some limits and boundaries lately, and we wonder how that is compatible with love. Maybe we have to get over the feeling that love has not showed up for us in our own lives. Maybe we are grieving or hurting. Maybe we have difficult histories with parents or partners or religious communities who did not show love. And so love being at the center feels like an impossibility. Maybe we don't know if love is strong enough to counter evil. A lot of horrible things are happening in this world. Is responding in love adequate? Now maybe we have to get over our dislike of change. It's okay to say that we actually really like the eight principles and we will miss them. Or the fear that we cannot change. Can we really learn to live a life with love at the center? Can we transform? You know, maybe we're not there yet. But maybe this pinwheel thing is aspirational. Maybe this faith thing is aspirational. We're not there yet. But maybe we are being called there. Maybe the ultimate task of our faith journey is answering the call to love. Now this feels like a really good moment to sing Jason's song again. But I want you to help me with something. I want you to help me to change the words. Augie, can you help with this? We're going to hand out pencils. Mary has them. And I want you to change the words standing on the side of love to answering the call to love. Now, this is in the teal hymnal. It's 1014. 1014 in the teal hymnal. And I know, I know, you have always been taught not to write in books, right? And certainly not in a hymnal. But this is actually what Jason Shelton is asking us to do. And Mary and I are giving you permission to do this, right, Mary? So just take your pencil. Mary needs the pencils back. Take your pencil, and on hymn 1014, everywhere it says, standing on the side of, just write in, answering the call to. OK? When you're done, we'll sing. Answering the call to love. It appears in some different places. 
It's in the chorus a lot. Why doesn't this hymnal have page numbers, Mary? It's All right, standing on the side of love three, you have to cross it out there. Answering the call to love. I promise it scans, okay? That's why Jason picked these words. <laughs> and then, yeah, standing on the side of love four, answering the call to love. Give you one more minute. You got it? Let's sing it with the new words. Please rise as you are able for answering the call to love. It has become our practice to pose a question based on the theme of the service each week. It can be a topic of, where's my words? <laughs> of sharing, ooh, <laughs> sharing at coffee hour or <laughs> with friends during the week. If you'd like to delve deeper into this question, we invite you to join us at our Zoom coffee hour on Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Please contact the office if you need that link. Our question this week is, what is at the center of your faith? What is at the center of your faith?
Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us online this morning. If you're here in person, I hope you'll stay for coffee hour and maybe you'll make a valentine. I told you I'd give you another idea of who to send a valentine to, and it's the staff and congregation at the UU Congregation of St. Petersburg, the ones who had to face those hateful protesters. Even though they live out their values boldly, it was still a really upsetting event for them. So in case they're getting messages of hate again this morning, let's send them some love notes, shall we? I'll collect them all and send them down in a big envelope. Maybe they'll even get there by Wednesday. And I'll close with these words. Sometimes we build a barrier to keep love tightly bound. May this place and these people and the words we share here and the songs that we sing here help to unbind our hearts, to move us toward a place where love really can be at the center. We may not be there yet, but emboldened by faith, let us dare to proclaim that we are answering the call to love. Go in peace. Amen.